G'day guys, in this video we're looking at my reset shelves for castles. Uh, really fascinating subject. Now, don't forget, please, this channel tends to cover Western Europe, typically between 10th and 13th centuries. So my library is actually really focused on, on really that area. Um, I do have a number of other titles which look at uh, Crusader castles in various Crusader states, and also um, some of the stuff in, in sort of Eastern Europe. So I'm not going to cover off on those books today, but I am going to cover off really on, um, on the Western European side of the house. Okay, let's take a look. Timber Castles by Robert Hyman has to be one of the kind of quintessential reads for this period. Um, so many castles, a lot of people don't realise this, but in fact so many castles were timber castles. Um, not a lot of people could really afford the whole stone castles and all of the expenditure which came with those. There's a phenomenal amount of cost in, involved in the upkeep of a stone castle, not just today, but back in the day as well. Uh, and if you look at the, the simple um, maintenance budgets of places like uh, Westminster Abbey or any of the cathedrals or the Tower of London, all of these kind of places, Rochester Castle even, uh, phenomenal amounts of money get spent every year in simple maintenance costs uh, because they're, they're stone castles. Timber castles were far less expensive but could be made to look, um, at least from a distance, like a, uh, a could be a stone castle, for example with paint and that kind of thing. Alright, some fantastic information in this book. One of the Bloomsbury books. Um, this is Early European Castles by Oliver Creighton. It's a really good read, nice concise, it's not that big. Uh, I think all of about 150 pages at most. However, um, there's really interesting information in this book. Uh, I really, really, really do recommend it. Fantastic read, uh, and I, as I say, recommend you uh, get a hold of a copy if castles, particularly in Western Europe, is your thing. Stephen Beattie's Cross Section of a Castle. I think this is a, a really phenomenal read. I think I've had this book since I was uh, very young. <laughs> um, but all the same, there's, there's really fantastic information in here which really does apply to sort of any age. Um, it's great to be able to explain points and there's a lot of really kind of interesting stuff from the point of view of a lot of the different topics that go with castles and the, the functionality of a castle that a lot of people don't kind of realise. So a really good read there and often you can pick up these books for uh, a lot less than you might realise. The Eyewitness Castles book, uh, again, Eyewitness books do some phenomenal work and uh, bringing that information to life for a lot of people. And I, I think for me especially, but also for a lot of people I know, these kind of books, the Osprey books and so on, are really where reenactment kind of began uh, long before we kind of knew reenactment was a thing. So this is a really good read, um, great information, and really kind of shows the development of castles and kind of the influence from the East and how that became translated in Western European castles. Life in a Medieval Castle by Joseph Giles. I cannot, uh, you know, underrate this book. I think this is possibly in terms of um, myself as a reenactor, as a his. I suppose a bit of an amateur historian. Uh, I'm certainly a historical educator and uh, I, I love my work and I love my passion and I really do enjoy sharing that passion with you guys and this is probably one of the books I do tend to read quite a lot of. Um, he's done a, a series of books, I think it's now five, which looks at uh, the life of a knight, the life of a village, um, medieval town, that kind of thing, and so it's, it's looking at the whole surround and how actually each of these elements is interacting with the other elements and how that is actually bringing medieval life about. 
So a really good read, and I, uh, I think there's so much fantastic information here. Uh, I, I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Not that expensive. I think it was a roughly 40 or so dollars. I got this book online, but I do recommend it. Oh. Lastly, um, Medieval Castles by the Haynes Group. Um, Haynes Group was obviously known for their books on cars that date right back into the 50s and 60s and 70s. I've had a bunch of these different books for different cars I've owned. Um, but they've done a really fantastic uh, book on the, the medieval castle and they obviously looked at the, the Get Along Castle which is, is on the cover. I, I think there's a lot of fantastic information here. Uh, and it really does bring about a lot of the castle life, not just for the lords and ladies or the knights and that kind of thing, but a lot of the other different people as well um, who would have been required to make a castle be able to function. Right, hey guys, um, that's it for my library on medieval castles. Uh, really looking forward to doing some development on this and hopefully in the years to come some experimental archaeology and experimental history who knows um, but really looking forward to what the future may bring for us if you have a, uh, a recommendation for a book please leave it in a comment below I'd really love to hear from you I really enjoy expanding my library and uh, bringing in new information that's really good. So I'd love to hear your comments. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.